So I built these wardrobes around about five years ago and they've been fantastic. Tons of storage space. Now, in this house, my wife's always cold, so we've always kept the temperature around 21 degrees. So we leave the heating on constantly and it just tops it up to 21 degrees. It's been great until last year, 2022, when the energy companies decided to hike up all the prices, which no one's really happy about apart from them and their shareholders. So anyway, we got hit by a huge gas bill, which we just couldn't afford to pay every month. So we decided to turn the heating down and turn it up as and when we needed it. But that's caused a whole heap of problems. Now, we live in a 1930s property. It's not the best insulated, although we have had the cavity walls done. We've put more insulation in the loft. We've done everything we can, really. But because of the fluctuation in temperature, we were hit with a lot of condensation of a morning, cold spots on the wall, windows. It's a nightmare. And now we've got a huge amount of mould inside the wardrobe. So we can't live with all that mould there. I'm not an expert on damp at all, although I have done a couple of other damp videos, which I'll leave links to in the description below. So I contacted the company that I've contacted in the past called Safeguard. They asked me a bunch of questions and they told me what the probable cause was. Now behind this wardrobe is an old disused chimney breast. Obviously that's not insulated, so it's a cold spot. So the warm air is hitting that creating condensation. The backs of the wardrobe, I used a three mil hardboard, which has got a coat, white coating on one side, which you've seen, which is full of mold. And the other side is sort of like bare MDF, which is probably just sucking up the moisture from that wall. Now I'm expecting to find a load of green mold on the backs of these wardrobes. And it's all coming from the condensation from that wall that's what the company have told me when we found the mold last year it was devastating you know it was it was creeping onto our clothes and making everything smell making the room smell it's driven us mad we've tried so many different products that are available on the high street you know they say they're anti-mold anti-fungal anti this anti that we've sprayed them yeah it's got rid of it within a couple of weeks it's come back again nothing that's readily available, we've tried, has worked. We even put in some of these moisture traps, which yeah, they've sucked up a lot of water, but the mold's still there. That's why we've gone straight to the professional company who are experts in this field and know exactly what products work. So I've taken their advice and kindly enough, they have gifted me some products to try and cure the problems. So they've given me a few packs of this stuff, which is ultra therm wall insulation. So this is for insulating your walls from the inside when insulating from the outside is impossible. So chimney breast, you can't do the outside because it's a hole in the middle. So you have to do the inside. It's foam on one side, which is quite squidgy. And then it's got like a mesh on the other side. So there's an adhesive that you put on with a six mil notch trowel, like tile adhesive. You stick that on, and when it's dry, you can actually plaster that with just multi-finish plaster or board finish plaster. You don't have to go over it with anything else. So it's what, about 12 mil thick. So it's a very convenient method of insulating your walls from the inside without losing too much space. They've sent me the adhesive to put it on with. They've sent me a couple of bottles of spray, which is a mold eliminator, which I need to spray all over the mold to kill it. And then a mold sanitizer, which should keep the mold at bay for about six months, they say. They've sent me a mold resistant emulsion paint, which I could, if I was gonna plaster this, I could use that straight on top of the plaster. But because it's behind a wardrobe, I'm not gonna go to the trouble of plastering it but I am gonna coat the backs of the wardrobes with this. and Hopefully that'll deter any mold from ever building up on the back of the wardrobe again. And they've also sent me this little anti-mold additive, 
which you can add to your paints or your wallpaper paste or your towel grout and it'll prevent mold from ever occurring on them so if you're going to do glossy skating boards on the wall that you've treated if you added that to your, your gloss paint it should stop the mold ever coming back the first thing it tells you to do is to wipe off any excess first any dust so a lot of that is just dust which is wiping off so although that's taking it off it's not killing it all the dust that I've knocked off, I'm just going to hoover off. Make sure you're in a, a well ventilated room. Um, it is a bleach product, so just be careful with it and be careful with what it comes in contact with. So I'll just give that a few minutes just to soak in. So I've left that alone for about five minutes. Now I'll just wipe off all the excess and all the, the mold that you can see, that should just wipe away. So can you see that bit there that didn't wipe off with the dry cloth? So that's just wiped clean away now. So hopefully this has killed the existing mold point blank. That mold shouldn't come back, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to spray it with the other product to try and eliminate any chance of the mold ever coming back. So as I predicted before, there is a lot of green mold on the back of the wardrobe. I don't really want to kick all the spores up into the air, so my plan is to just hoover as much as I can off and then use the spray to kill it. Okay, so I've hoovered that as best I can, and again with the mould eliminator, give it a good spray, let it soak in for a few minutes, and then give it a good wipe off. And because it's bleach, make sure you don't get it on the wife's carpet. Right, I've let that soak in for a few minutes, and I'll just wipe it off with a bit of kitchen towel. So hopefully that has killed all the mould. When it's dried out we can give it a, a coat of that mould resistant emulsion paint. So after I got rid of the wardrobes I realised that there was lining paper on the wall. So I've just steamed that all off and got rid of that. And I've put the first four of the insulation panels up. Now let me tell you, they were really user friendly. Dead easy to cut with a Stanley knife or a pair of decorated scissors. Notch tile and trowel, six mil gaps. Spread the adhesive, really easy. And then just, I used a tile and float just to pat them in and get a good grab into the adhesive. So simple to use. So I'll show you how I do the next few. So grab a bit of the adhesive out the bucket. And I don't know about you, but to me that looks like Mr. Whippy ice cream. Really nice consistency. So I just put a good load on the trowel and then just float it on the wall. So don't put too much on because it does go off pretty fast. So just do enough for one or two panels. And I know there's electrics there, but they're all dead. They're not dead. They're for the servant bells, which are reinstated. But that's another story. So I'll just cut a little hole for them and leave them protruding through. But all, all this, all that, that's all dead from before we've done the rewire. So I've never been the best at spreading tile adhesive, but even I can spread this stuff. So 
It doesn't have to be very neat. Just get it on the wall. They're only 12 volt wires these, there's not much power going through them. It's like a doorbell. Right. And I've also staggered the joints as well. I don't know whether it makes any difference, but if you're going to plaster it, it'd probably be better to stagger the joints. I've just made sure it's a nice tight joint down there. So if you look closely at it, it's got this, I think it's like a fiberglass mesh, but then behold, behind that is holes. So I'm guessing the plastic grabs into them holes and makes the foam quite rigid. And then the second coat will give a nice flat finish. Clever product. Right, and to cut it, Decorated scissors. It's really easy. So on the corners here, I've just left this bit overhanging because it was easier to leave it overhanging and trim it later than it was to trim it with the exact size. Now, I've done a little bit of experimenting with different things and I've found the best thing to cut it when it's overhanging like that is actually a bread knife. So a nice sharp bread knife. It just cuts it really easily and really cleanly. So, great tip, little bread knife. So that is how I've insulated an external wall from the inside with ultra thin panels from Safeguard. Now I'll leave links to the Safeguard website where you can purchase these panels. It's not affiliated, I won't make any money or any commission from it. Uh, I'll just lead you to where you can buy them. In my opinion, it's the perfect solution. If you can't insulate the, the cavity of the wall or you can't insulate outside, this is a, a great solution. It's very cost effective, very user friendly. Any DIY I could do it. Simple to cut, simple to put on the wall. Once it's in this state, you can get the angle beads for it. Uh, and then you can plaster straight over it, ideal. You can put plasterboard over it as well if you want a stronger finish wall, if it needs to be more impact resistant. But yeah, you can plaster straight on top of that. So I'm well impressed with it and how easy it was to use, brilliant, two thumbs up. So all that's left for me to do now is to paint the back of the wardrobes and to refit them but I'm sure you don't want to watch me paint or refit wardrobes. If you do want to see me fit wardrobes, there is another video on my channel about that. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and it's given you some insight into how to insulate your wall from the inside. And if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.